Hi everyone and welcome to a new Decode tutorial video. Today I would like to talk about a very interesting topic which is large language models that you all know since uh, GPT, ChatGPT became popular. But did you know that there is a way to run your own language models in the browser without having to call any API or send your data to a third party? And the solution to this is called WebLLM which is basically a way to run a different ver variation of LLMs in your browser using WebAssembly and WebGPU. So you can test it on this website. This is the URL. But uh, what I did was to try to introduce uh, this uh, framework inside cables so that you can augment your experiences by uh, running WebLLM directly in cables. So it's very, very interesting. Um, of course, it requires that you have a good computer or a GPU that is strong enough to be able to run some models. But of course, the complexity and the speed of the model would be determined by your GPU. So you can check it out also on, on, on GitHub. This is the link to the code here. And uh, you see it's getting traction. It's already 12,000 uh, 12, uh, stars at the time uh, we shoot this video, but it, I mean, it's have been following this since the beginning and it's really uh, growing very quickly. And you are already have like models that you may be familiar with if you are following the LLM uh, space a bit. So the, you heard, heard maybe about the Llama 3 that was released by uh, Meta a few uh, weeks ago. And it's already in a quantized version, meaning that it's a version that is uh, simplified to take less uh, GPU RAM already on web LLM. So that's a very powerful model and you can run it uh, very easily. So uh, let's try to do this uh, together to make a simple uh, chat app and see uh, where we can uh, get from there. Okay, so now we are in our cables app and as always, we're gonna put our main loop to be able to um, run some any uh, visuals. And uh, I made the ops for you so you don't have to code anything. And as you're gonna see, it's very simple. So the first one we're gonna use is called import module and it's in the decode open team that you should have joined. Uh, if you don't, please go on Discord or uh, check behind this uh, video. We have the, uh, below this video, we have the link. And if you just join our team, we already have like 39 uh, ops and uh, hundreds more uh, coming. So when you join this team on cables on the website, not on the standalone version, you have access of all these ops already. And one is called um, as import module. And it's just a way to inject uh, modules, so JavaScript modules into cables. Uh, we talked about this in the course. Um, cables by default use IIFE, which is a way to inject you know, old school scripts inside the project. But new, more modern packages are using the ESM module, so the in, uh, an import keyword. And the way to use this in cables uh, is to use this op uh, for now. So it's not really built in, but it doesn't matter. I have the op uh, for made for you. And we're gonna just load the, the library directly from the CDN. So it's hosted for us online. We don't have to do really uh, anything about this. It's gonna be name import. So just on this, just follow me because uh, it takes some trial and errors. And this is the URL we want as given by the WebLLM team on their website. So I'm going to save the patch. And if I click load, as loaded true, and I don't have any errors. So I should have already the WebLLM package uh, loaded. Now, we don't want to, we want to click to load this. We want to, to load this automatically. So what I would do is to make a sequence and with the new version now called sequence multiport and say, I'm going to trigger this once. So only once I start the project, I create this yellow cable and I trigger this import module. Okay, I'm doing this again, I'm reloading the patch and I should have this being loaded. Okay, we're good. Now, now that we have the library, we need to load, see what the different models we have because I, I told you that there are like a lot of models that are already available in WebLLM. So one op would be to just list the LLM models, right? So I'm gonna just trigger it. And you see by now, it's really growing. There's already 91 models that you can run in your 
here new cables and there it's a bit it's it's big right so you have maybe you heard about Gemma which is the Google it's a very new uh, model that was released and so we need a way to filter all this so this is what I do I did with this up I can already filter by name so if I say I only want the the Gemma one I'm gonna type Gemma and list again and you see I only have 10 now now there's also another option that that is basically telling you uh, to filter if you only have low VRAM so that your GPU is not very strong and you want to um, be able to only select the models that require the least amount of VRAM and then you can do so again and now we only have four so these are the the four different models let's see if we can expand this a bit I'm gonna click here and on the uh, here on the magnifying glass and this is what the library tells us this is where the path is to download the weights of the model and each time how much um, megabyte I need from my GPU and also the window size so how many tokens how many words I mean it's not really a word it's half a word but how many half words can I put in the prompt uh, I think we could try so of course uh, how to read this uh, we know this is Gemma 2 and then you need to read this part here it tells you at the end it tells you the context so 1k is uh, 1024 and this is it tells you okay it's quantized and it's using 16 bits this is quantized and using uh, flow 32 so this flow 32 is going to be more uh, uh, required more ram and the trick is that if you have higher precision so that if the number is 32 you should the model should be better and as you reduce the the quantization and the the lower of basically bits you need to for each weight of the model, the model is going to be uh, a bit dumber, but of course it's going to be faster. So it's always about finding the right um, compromise between the two. So let's try this one. It doesn't really matter for now. We just want to make sure that it works. So I go, I go back here and click on the wheel and I just simply take the ID that I care about. Okay, so I can and can connect this so automatically now when I, I release the model and I get this ID, which is the name of the model we're gonna load. And this you can change dynamically uh, very easily. Now the next op we need is to actually create and load the weights of the model. So there is an op called LLM in the web LLM package. And it tells you, okay, I just need the model ID that we just got here and I need to load. So I'm going to click and I'm going to show you what happens uh, here as you click. There's a progress info box. So I'm clicking there and we should see some things happening. So okay, it tells you, oh, I need to, uh, I'm fetching for the first time, you need to download all the weights. And you see it's actually very big. So that's the drawback of using web LLMs is that the first time you will need to download, uh, like in, in this case here, 1.4 gigabyte that is uh, stored on your computer. But then, if I now simply save again and connect to the LLM, I would just need to reload it in memory. I don't need to download it again. So I need to download it once and it stays in my Chrome uh, or the browser you use, uh, basically storage. So what we could do is to make another sequence here and say first, can I do this now? First. I'm going to connect to list the models, the available models, and then when this is finished, I'm going to trigger the LLM. So I make sure that I get the name, and then I'm going to trigger it again. I'm saving, and I'm reloading again, and we should see that it should make it faster. Yes, loading model from cache. I don't need to redownload it again. And then it's loaded. It's, it runs, we have it here on our GPU. Now the last thing we need is to be able to run the model now that we have it in memory. And to do that, we need another hub that is called chat. And it's simply this one. So for the, the experts among you, uh, this is the, I only, it only supports, I think, the chat variation and not the instruct model. But you can always prompt uh, as a chatbot and, and basically ask it and just get the first result and it's basically the same as doing the instruct version of it. But uh, just to test it, I'm gonna connect the engine. That is what we need. What else do we need here? Well, we need to 
put the messages. So how does it work in all LLM application, web LLM or others? You always need to encapsulate uh, your message and you have a different role. So you first is, is going to say, okay, I am the system you are answering as a cowboy. This is one of the message. And then you're going to put your message and say, hello, my name is whatever. And you're going to finally get the third message, which is the AI message, the answer to this query. So the only way here to use the chat is to encapsulate what we want to say into this message array. So we need to just simply convert our prompts or text into a message. So let's try this. Uh, we have an op for this called message. And as I was telling you, these are the different roles. There's also the tool role. I'm not going to cover this yet because it's not really well implemented yet in the web LLM package. But just uh, start with, uh, let's start with user. And here you can write your content. Hello, my name is Kiel. That's my message. And okay, we need to, this is a, an object and we need to transform this into an array. So how do we do this? Well, we can uh, use different op. I think I have array uh, from object. Let's try this, array. Array from input object, it's an op that I did uh, for this. I can just simply connect it and it just, I can put as many messages as I want and it would give me back here just a simple array. Which is, it's the message is very simple. It's just the role and the content of your text. So I'm just trying to connect this and see what happens. I'm activating the stream mode so that we don't need to wait for the total uh, answer and we can see the answers as it's generated by the model. I'm saving, I'm running, and voila. We have the result, we are chatting with the Google, uh, um, the latest Google model here in cables. So technically we need one, two, three, four and five ops and you have it already. So where can we go from there? I mentioned that we could add some um, system prompts so that we can tune how the model is supposed to answer. So to do that, there's a simple way. We can copy and paste our message, put the role to system, and now say you uh, answer or you are an expert. Uh, and you can really type anything here. Or, you speak like a uh, cowboy. Uh, be fun and interesting. So usually we put the system prompt first. So I'm going to disconnect here, put first the system prompt, then put my message. And you see, okay, it creates this array in this order. Now I'm going to run this again and let's see the difference. Howdy partner, fine name indeed. No, no. So this see that the answer is completely different now that we've prompted to say, hey, please answer me like this. It could be anything. It could be you are an expert in doing uh, marketing or YouTube videos, right? It could be anything. It just, it, all the prompts that you can uh, use in different uh, language models like ChatGPT, you can try to put them here. And so that's cool. I think this is like really uh, interesting so far, but we can, of course, uh, go a bit beyond this. Um, what if we want now to continue the conversation? The issue here is that because we put only these two sentences, if I start it again, it's, it's not remembering what, we have, what has been said before. So if I run this again, you see that at first it's random, right? It's never exactly the same because we don't have the same seed. And technically, if we put the, the same number, we should have the same uh, answer. Let's try this again. It's not exactly the same, right? Now let me try again. It also depends on the temperature. I think it works. If you put the same seed, uh, if I put now another seed, then it should be another answer. It's not exactly, exactly the same, but it's in the same, uh, of course, answering in the same context. But it doesn't remember anything, so it's a bit uh, annoying, right? We want to be able to uh, add uh, and remember. So I have this uh, up here, this um, add answer to history. 
but uh, let me try to first set it up so that we have just a way to uh, get this all the messages that were being sent if we want to display them. So maybe what we should do is to actually create an interface because it's not very nice uh, for the user. We just have a black screen here. So let's make a sidebar so we can actually chat with our model, make a text input, text input. Okay, we call this uh, prompt. This is an area, so it's big. Okay. Now, what this is what uh, we are typing, and we know that we need to convert this to a message, and it's going to be a user message. Okay. We need to send the thing to our uh, model, so we can put a button and say send it's when we we chat. Okay. Now, we want to add our mess this message that we're going to type to the conversation. So we need to have some way, like a variable that holds all the messages that we've been uh, playing and, and putting so far. So what I would do is I made this op that makes uh, adding to an array easy, bullet, uh, uh, easy, sorry, it's called array push object. It's very simple, it takes three things, uh, just uh, like in the initial array. So it could be this initial array, right? The, this from the system prompt. So I could just remove my user message, disconnect everything, put this here. Okay, so I have my initial array and then I can push or I can reset uh, the array. And this is where I'm going to connect my message here. I can put this here and I can even when I send it, I'm adding the message to this uh, big array and this we're going to call this by making a variable for set array and we're going to call this guy history so if i test hello and i'm going to print this next to us hello mm, how are you you see that i'm continuously pushing to this memory okay so now what we want to do, we can reset it by just uh, uh, click reset. And then you need, there's a bug here. You need to re-disconnect uh, it and reconnect it if you want to see the uh, array updated. Yeah, this, this should be reset somehow. Maybe, yeah, it's a bit weird. Uh, let's see after. And now that we have the history, the only thing we need to do is to connect it to our chat. I'm getting my history and I'm putting this here. Okay. And now it would be nice to be able to actually see the text on screen. So what we could do is simply from our main loop, we're going to put a, a simple uh, text mesh to display text on screen. And instead of uh, putting cables, we're going to simply take the, the response and connect it here. Maybe we need to scale it down because it's a bit too big. Scale the line, the line scale and transform it because it's a bit too high on the screen. So I can put it down, uh, play a bit with the, I don't know, the line height. Okay, line scale, that's good enough. Okay, and put this up. Maybe it's a bit too small for you guys, so I'm gonna put this a bit bigger. Okay. Now the issue is that if the line is too big, it's gonna you know break uh, and and not be very easy to read. Uh, to read. So we can add line breaks. It's an uh, cables up and say we don't want a line that is bigger than I don't know 70 characters. So at least it automatically goes uh, back to the the. the the beginning and you see that the, the all the emojis are not really well supported by the text mesh so uh, we can uh, there's not much we can do here we can use instead of using text mesh and 3d we could use just a simple div uh, but i think for the exercise here it's gonna it's gonna work fine we're just gonna ignore and say don't use emojis so we can say that right away change your message don't use emojis 
and we should be fine. So I'm saving, I'm reloading the patch. Let's see how it works now. Automatically it starts to load the model. It's quite fast huh, with this model on my GPU memory. And now, of course, I need to connect the chat. Something we forgot is that once we push the thing, we need to trigger the chat. So let's try now. Hello, my friend. And we see we have the data being streamed uh, quite quickly, actually. And uh, I've seen that the emojis that we put are still being there, so it's not really uh, uh, accurate. Let's check here the answer. So maybe we need to uh, modify the prompt for this to work correctly. But there is one thing that is uh, missing here, is that we are putting our system and user prompt and we get the answer. But if we want the model to remember the conversation, we basically add, need to add the answer here to history so that we can it can remember uh, the thing. So uh, how do we do this? Well, it's simple. Either we take this, wrap it into a message and we push to history, or there's a better way, I would say, uh, because on the chat up, I have add answer to history. But for it to work properly, we need to make sure that the input array is not uh, only the system prompt because then it would be overwritten by the same uh, message and the same system message and our message but instead we could what we could do is we could get the history put it there so we make sure that we have this history we push the new message to it and with this up here it will push the answer to it also automatically but of course if we want to like make this the prompt if we reload the page instead of using array from input objects I mean we could if you had many messages but we could simply um, try to use this array push uh, push object we can take it like this and by default if it's there's nothing it will create an array so you can connect this there and so at the beginning we already pushed the system prompt on the array and we set our history from there, we can push our new messages and automatically add from this up. So let's save, reload, and see if it works. It's loading the parameters. Takes a bit of time. I make sure here that I've checked and answer to a story. So how to test this? I would hello, my name is Kirel. So far, so good. Nice to meet you. Uh -huh. Okay. Now, what's my name? And now we see that the... And yeah, you just told me, Kiel. So this is a way I test to make sure that I remember. It could not have a, such a weird name that it could not have invented it out of thin air. So, and we can actually have the proof here when, when we just inspect the history variable that we have a whole conversation. So the good thing with this is that you can, it's just a simple array, right? So you can, if you want, edit the code, inject some things in it. In more um, developed LLMs models, you have a session ID because usually you have a server that serves the model for many people at once and each conversation has a specific uh, user ID. But here in this case, because we are chatting with ourselves in the local model, uh, we don't necessarily need the session IDs. Uh, there, because everyone, if they go on this, let's say this is a published website, they will have their own conversation and would not expect to chat with uh, like many people on the same computer. So it's it's simplifying the the thing a bit, but uh, and and it's just then a simple construct of an array of JSON and JavaScript objects, and then we just push an, uh, the message there. So it's easy to inspect and everything. And this could be the cool thing about this is this now could be the input of a new prompt and you say um, we could maybe try to do this. So let's say I want to analyze how the text. I guess simply get this history and convert this to string, right? So array to string. And uh, we need to ask, uh, we need to convert this. So I think it's more like a stringify thing. Here. Let's try again, array of objects to string. And now this is a big string. So now this could be the prompt we want for 
a new chat uh, session which is not can be done next to this one so there's something then you need to know about the web llm for now it's that it's not uh, in parallel multi-threaded like one needs to be executed and then the other i try to have the two run at the same time but it's it, you're limited by the gpu the model is l basically uh, loaded only once so it's going to be one or the other or one after the other but here the model is quite uh, fast so let's say now I want to analyze the, this history. So this becomes my prompt again, right? And we can just copy a message and say this is going to be a user message. Okay, now I want this to be, uh, I, I take the LLM model here so we can make a new variable as we did before for the history. Call this LLM, it's a bit cleaner, I, I would say, if you need to have many instances of chat. Okay, we get it here. Now we need to convert the message to uh, an array, so we can use the same uh, array from input objects here. We don't need to remember any history, so I can... And let's see now how smart the thing is. So if I want to concatenate things, this is there's no instruction here, this is just a string. So what I would need to do is to add here in between an instruction to, to say to the message, to the model, maybe analyze the content of this conversation and tell us uh, something. So to do this, we have in cables the string compose op that we talked about uh, several times, which is a simple string, uh, you know, um, replacement. Wh wherever you see dollar a, b, c, d, and it's basically replacing the variables here. So you could say um, the format here could be the instruction, and then we connect here the data. And you can do this, and it can be in. It's not necessarily uh, pushed at the end of the string, right? It could be, um, let's say, here is a conversation, dollar a. And now I'm gonna say, okay, maybe I put this to an, another string so you see it better. I could put in a string editor, right? So here is a conversation. Uh, analyze it and give me the personality traits of each character. Each character. So you see now that I have this concatenation that the whole conversation that we just talked about is going to be inserted here and then I have another instruction after it. So this is my instruction and to make sure Let's try to visualize the, sorry, the answer here. Um, uh, this string. And you see now this is the full prompt. And I keep it this as JSON. I don't even care. I mean, I hope the model is smart enough, but we're going to switch to a better one if it's not to be able to analyze this because this is not it's really easy for uh, stronger models. And But let's see right now. So this is my now my message and see the answer and let's try this chat and I'm going to just connect this response to a big V string okay let's try this something is wrong let's try again what so maybe I did something wrong Yeah, it's the history, like the, there's something weird with the, the array from input object. I'm not sure it refreshed correctly, so I'm trying, trying this again. Yeah, same, same stuff. String compose. Uh, maybe it's the message again. Let me check. Yeah, okay, here's the conversation. Okay, now, now it looks better. I think the... Something is wrong with my message or part. It was, I mean, maybe the string compose didn't register that we changed this. So it was not uh, really updating the, uh, the output there. Now we should have tried, let's try it again. Voila. Let's break down the personality of this character. Assistant. And you see now we, we basically did some kind of meta analysis of our own conversation. And you can run the two chats in parallel. So you could say automatically, uh, when this one is finished, I'm, I'm analyzing this just by connecting the two. 
because everything is linked and reactive. So um, I want to have fun. So first, let's saddle up. No, no, no. This is the cowboy talking, and then after, it will automatically update as long as we have space in the context. As long as this big message will not be too big for the small model. So that's that's one thing. That is uh, pretty cool, so you can uh, reason about the chat. Uh, something that we could try, I don't know if with this model, I didn't try because it's really uh, the, like low, I mean, low number of parameters, so it's not very, very smart. But we could try to modify our prompt and say um, each character as a valid JSON object. If you want to train the model, you need to be to. Um, if you want to talk to a model properly, you need to really uh, learn how to prompt them, and it's really trial and error. But um, here, I'm I'm asking, uh, give me this as a valid JSON object. But we don't know how strong the model is, and, it's, and if it can directly output valid JSON. So what you can do is have a few short prompt, or you give an example um, that would that would work. Uh, so or, like you basically feeding the output something like this like i'm really helping the model and say okay i'm expecting something like this um uh, character character one and then i'm saying uh, this is what i expect for the output right so uh, traits uh here and then I'm gonna put this as a list And uh, style, I don't know what it is, but and uh, I don't know, um, best quote. It seems a bit hard, but let's try. So we are expecting this as a list, right? So it's going to be here a list directly actually uh, is it correct what I'm, what I'm doing no it's not uh, it depends if we want either the no let's say we keep the ids of the characters here so it's going to be like this and then um, well, that's okay so i'm i'm basically trying to give this the the instructions of course when you do this with the better models we have also they have some frameworks that they help you uh, specify and create this kind of styles automatically and, and generate the examples for you i'm just like trying to do it on the fly with you guys this is not rehearsed uh, let's see if it works first let's see if the the so this seems to work like this has been updated but the message i just want to make sure Okay, it seems to be okay again. So let's try now. Uh, the the I'm disconnecting this here. It's not bad because it starts with JSON, which is uh, usually what has been trained on 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 the regular ChatGPT things, and then this is parsed and you can see this as a block quote instead of just having a pure a text. They show JSON and then explanations. So. It's not bad, it followed, our, but it's not exactly what we want because there's too much text. If we only wanted to have the JSON, uh, we would need to make it like completely valid. So we can go back to the prompt and say, um, JSON, no other explanation, pure JSON. See, I'm, I'm prompting and trying to go to an error here. And this will depend on how smart the model is, definitely. So, yeah, this is wrong because I, I didn't write this either, right? So it's also, it's not exactly good, but we see that the JSON gets uh, a bit simplified. So now, let's try with the exact same prompt, but with a stronger model. If I go back to the uh, list of LLM models here, and instead of Gemma, I'm gonna copy paste this guy here, uh, make a new, make a new cable. So it's first the list and then the model. And look for uh, llama and see the list. So 
I have these ones, right? And these are uh, pretty, pretty big. So we can try the this guy here, for instance. It, so this is the Lama 3.1, 8 billion parameter. Instruct, we, it would be better if we had the chat one, but let's see if we can actually have it. No, they only really, like, so they are, let's try these ones. Uh, low VM required, we can, we can even try to disconnect it. And then we have 15 other models, so they are quite big. And you see that the context, but it, this one requires 30 gigabyte of VRAM, which is, I don't have enough on my computer to, to run it. But uh, maybe you do if you have a really a, a big GPU, a cluster of GPUs, and it would take forever to load anyway. So it's not really. Uh, so this is the this is a Llama two version. So this is older. So we can keep the Llama three. I would say list again, ten, and let's try the, the first one. So I'm here. I'm taking the wheel model ID first one, and connect this instead. So once again, I connect this here and there. So now I'm going to save, reload. And we should see that it's not the same. I already downloaded it before, by the way. But this one, instead of doing 42 parts, this is 108 parts. So it's much bigger. Uh, and maybe this is actually being refreshed. So actually, I need to download it again. Um, but uh, because they, you know, they, even if though they keep the same name, they usually you know, make some modification and republish the models. So sometimes you may need to download them again. So you, yeah, this is big. So imagine now you deploy this to customers. They need to download four gigabytes before they can chat with your application. So you understand why this is not something that you could do for just a regular website because you would kill your bandwidth. Yet there is something that is coming. Uh, the Chrome. Um, browser is actually like the Gemma thing we saw is now being shipped within Google Chrome, meaning that in the future you would have a default model that would be loaded uh, if you needed to. And I guess this is the route that all the browsers are going to take so that you would have in a way a built-in language model and then you could have a special API uh, to query it directly. So you don't need to download this uh, and it's going to be shared over uh, many websites. But this is uh, like, a, like, a, like a tech demo, and, but to show you the possibilities. And it's actually amazing that you can load like, these models directly here. There's nothing else. It, all the data stays local and doesn't go on the web. So let's try again. Uh, hello, my friend. And now we have a stronger model. Let's see. And you see, it's, first, it's slower because it's, it's, there's a lot of RAM that being involved here. So it's extremely slow. I'm also recording on my, on my computer, right? So it takes uh, some resources. But this is particularly slow. It's not that slow usually. So you see the difference of uh, using a model with more or less VRAM. And I think we didn't check the low VRAM requirements. So this is really, really big, this one. And you see, for my small computer, this, is, uh, they would, this would not be appropriate. So. Bottom line, you need to tune the requirements, like to find the, the best, like the smallest model that would still fit the uh, application you want to build. Uh, otherwise, you would like if you overload because you want the most complete model, uh, then it, it's going to lag forever and it's not going to be uh, usable. You see even like streaming here and recording the computer is too much and it's uh, completely laggy. So uh, I hope that this uh, video was informative and in that we start to you start now to appreciate the powers of local LLMs while this is being still uh, uh, computed and it's actually fairly simple if you think about it it's just a few ops to push to a memory and there's one to load the model and one to chat with it that's all you need to actually make uh, cool interactions so if you want to um, you know can me continue uh, like if you want me to help you work with LLMs or if you want me to shoot other videos on this topic, web LLMs are others because of course there are other ways to link language model to cables. This is just uh, completely built in, but they, I've made many applications or you actually connect to external like open AI or anything else. Let me know in the comments and on over on Discord if you want me to tackle these. Uh, I'm, I'm not sure how uh, I think cables is a great framework to actually work with this. The issue is that we need to create more ops because they are not there at the beginning. 
but if you think about it with a standalone version now you could replace most of the frameworks that you uh, maybe heard about with LLM such as uh, Flowwise or Langflow they are uh, also node-based visual programming frameworks to uh, to uh, interact with LLMs but they they don't have the same flexibility as you has uh, as you have with cables because cables is a lower level and cables has all the webgl stuff that you don't have in other uh, uh, framework. So if you want to create this kind of amazing experiences or you chat with the model, it answer, analyzes what you think and do something on the screen, this uh, I think would be a good solution. If you just want to run a, like a chain, an agent that is doing something offline or online but it doesn't have to do anything with um, anything graphically, maybe it's better to use the existing tool because they are the community is just bigger and so more supported. So anyways, let me know what you think and I'll see you in the next one.